I think, you know, I also have sort of an intellectual curiosity in, in philosophy and in consciousness. And I think for me, I have an interest in the question, what are we all doing here? And if you start to really ask the question, what are we all doing here? You have to start looking in some of the more neglected corners of, uh, of human existence. Um, and so you have to start looking, I think, into um, more intense things. You have to start looking into, I mean, you have to look at um, how societies operate and function. You've got to look at prisons. You've got to look at war. You've got to explore all these kinds of things. Um, and... I have a drive to understand questions like that, and I think that um, you know, what psychosis in some ways it represents this phenomena that that people ha haven't quite figured out collectively um, what to make of it, and people have mistreated people experiencing such, um, but there still is a lot of question marks around it. Um, and I don't, I mean, I get weary of talking like this because I don't want to romanticize it and I actually don't want to put it into a psychological framework. I get really skeptical of that kind of stuff. And I'll tell you why. People put these things into psychological frameworks, even well-meaning people, they'll say, okay, so someone's having a breakdown and they had a weak ego before, or, and their ego was weakened because they had trauma in their life. So now they've got a compromised ego. And then at some point it becomes overbearing and now their unconscious floods them, takes over the ego, and now they're living in this archetypal world, you know, a Jungian approach or, or something like that, which is interesting. At the same time, the person experiencing that isn't thinking like that at all. So if that's where you're coming from and that's your ideology, you might miss exactly what's going on in front of you. <laughs> so I even think well-meaning theories have some disadvantages to them. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, the most important thing is to try and scrape away a lot of that stuff. And just that's why I have a hard time getting into diving into what are we actually going to do? We're going to do what needs to be done. We're going to be there with people and we're going to follow the original house manager at Soteria, Alma, I can't remember her last name, mm -hmm. she told me, she told me mm -hmm. they, they followed people's paths. That's what we do at Another Way. We meet people at Another Way, we get to know them, we get involved in their lives, we become community, and then we follow paths. They follow ours, we follow theirs. That's what we're going to do at Soteria. We're going to follow paths, we're going to figure out how to make things work in the moment. And we're going to be responsive, and we're not going to have preconceived notions about what we need to do to people. We're going to literally be there with people. Now, that doesn't neglect having training. <laughs> it doesn't neglect... You, I, I really think the best people that do this kind of work are people that have intellectual curiosities in lots of different subjects. It's it sort of, you know, you want to have kind of a... or be at least interested in a wider view of the world and pulling in from lots of different things. But I, I think it's hard to dictate, you know, how, you know, one way to respond to somebody or... or um, or what works, you know, I mean, it's sort of people are different and you don't want to corrupt it by having a lot of presumption. Um, the bottom line is we haven't figured this stuff out perfectly. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I call it creative doubt or creative skepticism. It's good to main, main, maintain that.